Hey Grammarians, so last time we talked about Raoul the penguin and how he was happier than another penguin, Cesar. Um, but I want to talk today about how to form the comparative and the superlative, you know, how to, com how to compare, how to say something is more than or most uh, in an unfamiliar situation. If you're looking at a word for the first time or you're encountering, you're trying to figure out how to make a word comparative or superlative. You know, to be like, oh, well, I've got this word, I've got this word cute. Like, that's a cute little baby penguin. But how do I say that it is more cute than another animal? Well, there's a, there's a shorthand for that. Sometimes you can say more cute, certainly. But you could also say cuter. And you could furthermore say cutest. And it turns out that there are a, a series of sound rules in English that kind of govern the way that we choose to make these words go. So I'll show you, I'll show you each of them in turn. So, okay, so we've got, so we've got this little table that I'm building here and we've got a description, how it looks in the comparative, and how it looks in the superlative. So if you take a word like cute, oh, and then word. So if you take a word like cute, Words like cute um, have what we call one syllable, one word sound, cute. And so a word like cute uh, that uh, is one syllable and ends in an E, so one syllable ends in E, all we have to do to make it comparative is uh, add an R. So add R, and that gives us cuter. For the comparative, all you have to do is add st, and you get the word cutest. But what if you've got a word like big? If you tried to add just r to that, it would just look like bigger, or st to that, it would look like biggest. And that that's not really how we would form these words in standard English, that doesn't go. Because they're kind of inconvenient to say. We like to have um, vowels in between some of those, those consonant sounds, between the b and the g and the st. Uh, so what you do, if it's a one syllable, and it's only got one vowel in the middle, like i, like that, one vowel, and it ends in a consonant, like a, like a g, then what you do is double the consonant, and add ER. So this word big ends in a G, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, for the comparative, I'm gonna say big, and then I'm gonna double that G, I'm gonna use it twice, bigger, like that, and then add the ER. Likewise, for the superlative, same thing. So you double the consonant at the end of the word, and then you add EST. So it becomes B-I-G, and then I double this consonant sound, so B-I-G-G-E-S-T, biggest. And for words like short and sweet, oh, I should clarify, uh, for, for this one, for big, um, this should end in one consonant. So B-I-G, there's only one consonant there. Uh, because for words like short and sweet that have one syllable, but either have two vowels, like sweet does, so it's E and E, or two consonants at the end, what you do is you just add ER, so shorter or sweeter. Uh, and for the superlative form, add EST. So shortest or sweetest. And now we're getting into the weird stuff. So if you take a word like shiny, which is two syllables, and it ends in Y, then what you have to do is you change Y to an I, and you add ER. So shiny becomes shinier. See how this Y becomes an I here? Same thing for superlative. The Y becomes an I, and then you add EST. So shiniest. 
Now, if you've got a word like magnificent, magnificent. This is a four-syllable word. It means like super huge, super great, super wonderful. Um, you got a word like that. You take a word like that. It's a little bit too big to be adding more parts to the way that standard American English works. So you wouldn't say magnificenter or magnificentest. It just sounds unwieldy because the word's already pretty long. So if you've got a two or more syllable word that doesn't end that doesn't end in, in Y, then you just have to add the word more to the beginning. So more magnificent and most magnificent. So let's say that you're encountering a word you've never seen before. Uh, and in a, in a sentence, you have to compare the, uh, let's say the word is blarfy. I don't know what it means. Probably something gross. Um, so if we want to compare two really gross meals, you know, like a steaming pile of, I don't know, dog food covered in flies, or, a, you know, a plate of ancient cheese. It's like 3,000 years old. You got to eat it. Gross. Uh, which one is grosser? But you have to use, you have to describe them using the word blarfy, this word we've never seen before. Well, what do we know about blarfy? Well, it's got two syllables, blarfy. So that automatically crosses out any of this stuff. Um, it does end in a Y, blarfy. So we know that it's probably going to behave like shiny, like the word shiny, because it got two syllables and it ends in Y. So um, I'm going to say that the dog food is less blarfy and the cheese is blarfier. In fact, this cheese is the blarfiest food on the planet. Now, don't get me wrong. I love a good stinky cheese, but this one in particular, this 3,000 year old cheese, super blarfy. In fact, I'm just gonna go so far as to say, it is the blarfiest. You can blarf anything, David out.